In this video, we will talk about the Young's modulus, which is also known as the modulus of elasticity. First, we will summarize some general information about the Young's modulus, and then we will calculate its value based on the data from a tensile test. Young's modulus is basically a measure of the stiffness of an elastic body. The higher the value of the Young's modulus, the more stiff the body becomes. Or, you could say, the higher the Young's modulus, the less elastic the body gets. The unit of the Young's modulus is Newton per square millimeter. That's essentially the same unit as the unit of stress. Why is that? Because Young's modulus is calculated as the stress divided by the strain. And since the stress has the unit Newton per square millimeter and the strain has no unit whatsoever, Young's modulus retains the same unit as stress. If you have a stress-strain diagram, Young's modulus can be interpreted as the slope of the straight line on the stress-strain diagram in the elastic region. So again, the straight line in the elastic region on a stress-strain diagram is basically, has basically the slope that corresponds to the value of Young's modulus. And the Young's modulus can be ex can be determined experimentally from a tensile test, which we will do in the following. We have a bar with a quadratic cross section and the initial length of that bar is 50 centimeters. If we subject that bar to a tension force of 50 kN, the bar becomes expanded by 1 cm. The expansion is denoted by delta L and delta L is 1 cm. As I said, the bar has a, has a quadratic cross-sectional area and the width and the height of the cross-section are 1 cm respectively. That means that the cross-sectional area of this bar is 1 square centimeter or 100 square millimeters. We will be using the unit square millimeters because that's part of the unit of stress. So again, we're subjecting our bar to a tensile test and the tension force is 50 kN. From that information, let's calculate the Young's modulus for the bar. The formula for Young's modulus is here and we're gonna adopt this version because we can just plug in our data from the tensile test. E is equal to F, the tension force, times L naught or L sub zero, the initial length, divided by the cross-sectional area, the, actually the initial cross-sectional area, but in our case, that area is gonna stay the same in the expanded state and in the unstressed state. So don't worry about the sub zero yet. Times delta L. F, the tension force, is 50 kN. I'm gonna keep the unit kN. You could also convert it to Newton, but for now I'm gonna keep it at kN. Times L sub zero, that's the initial length, which is 50 centimeters. So let's convert it into millimeters and write down 500 millimeters. And the conversion is just done to stay consistent with the unit of stress. Divided by A sub zero, or just A, the cross-sectional area, which is 100 square millimeters, times delta L, the expansion, and that's one centimeter or 10 millimeters. And as you see, the units millimeter cancel each other out here. So we are left with kilonewton per square millimeter. And the value of E, of Young's modulus, for the material of our bar is therefore 25 kilonewton 
per square millimeter. And that corresponds to the Young's modulus of concrete. At this point, let me tell you something useful about the Young's modulus. First, there is another way to interpret the value of Young's modulus. In our case, the value is 25 kilonewton per square millimeter, and you could interpret it as the stress that is required to achieve a tension of one point. Sorry, yes, a tension of 1.0. In other words, if you apply a stress of 25 kilonewton per square millimeter on the bar, you are able to expand the bar to a, to a length that's twice of the initial length. So if you have a strain of 1.0, and remember there is no unit behind the value of the strain, if you have a strain of 1.0, that means that you're doubling uh, the length of the bar in reference to the initial length. So to accomplish that you need to apply a stress that corresponds to the Young's modulus. And the second piece of information that I wanted to tell you is that if you think for a few seconds about the magnitude of the Young's modulus you will realize that the value is very high actually. I mean think about it. If you apply a force of 25 kilonewton, which corresponds to a mass of 2,500 kilograms on just one square millimeter, I mean, that's a force that can easily punch through your finger, so to say. So even though the value is very, very high, but remember, that's the value, that, that's, the value that's needed to basically expand the initial length of your bar by 2. And this is why the value is so high for the Young's modulus. With that said, I hope that this information was helpful to you and I'll certainly talk to you later.